I was in a tight spot. I had to go on a business trip for a week, but I couldn't leave my house unattended. That's when my sister Sarah offered to house sit. We had always been close growing up, but as we got older, we grew apart. She had gone down a different path in life and I had become more career focused. Despite our differences, I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to reconnect. Plus, I wanted to help her out since she had been jobless for a while. When I told my parents about Sarah house sitting, they were surprised but relieved that someone would be taking care of the house while I was away. They had always been worried about me being alone, especially since I had been single for a while. My parents were always supportive of Sarah, even though she had made some questionable decisions in the past. They believed in second chances and wanted her to succeed in life. As for the rest of the family, I had a brother who lived in a different state, and we didn't talk as much as we used to. He was busy with his own life, and we had grown apart over the years. Sarah had always been closer to him, and they talked on the phone regularly. I didn't mind since I was happy that they were keeping in touch. When I handed over the keys to Sarah, I had a feeling that things would be okay. She seemed excited to have the opportunity to make some money and I was glad that I could help her out. Little did I know that this decision would turn out to be a huge mistake. When I left for my business trip, I made sure to leave detailed instructions for Sarah. I told her how to take care of the plants, the pets, the house in general. I reminded her to be careful and to call me if she needed anything. She promised to take good care of everything and to keep in touch. As the days passed, I received occasional texts and calls from Sarah, letting me know that everything was fine. I was relieved and grateful that she was doing her job well. I focused on my work, hoping that the trip would be successful and that I would return to a clean and intact house. But when I received a call from my neighbors, my world came crashing down. I couldn't believe that my house had burned down and that it was my own sister who had caused it. I immediately cut my trip short and rushed back home to assess the damage. The scene that greeted me was devastating. The house was in ruins and there was no way anyone could have survived the fire. I felt a lump form in my throat as I realized that I had lost everything I owned. I couldn't comprehend how my sister had managed to let this happen. I was angry, confused and heartbroken all at the same time. When I spoke to Sarah, she was in tears, apologizing profusely. She told me that she had accidentally left the stove on while cooking and that the fire had spread quickly. I could see the guilt in her eyes and I couldn't bring myself to be angry with her. Instead, I focused on the task at hand, which was to deal with the insurance company and figure out how to move forward. It was a painful process and the insurance company sent over agents to investigate the cause of the fire. They combed through the rubble looking for any evidence of foul play. As much as I wanted to believe that it was just an accident, there was a nagging feeling in the back of my mind that something wasn't right. Little did I know that the investigation would reveal a scandal that was much bigger than I could ever imagine. As the insurance agents combed through the rubble, they found some strange items that didn't belong in my house. It was in the part where the fire hadn't caused as much damage due to firefighters getting a hold on it. They discovered several expensive designer handbags, jewelry and electronics that I had never seen before. It was odd that my sister would have such high-end items given that she had been jobless for a while. When I asked Sarah about them, she became defensive and refused to give me a straight answer. That's when I started to suspect that something was amiss. I asked the insurance agents to look into the matter further and they found evidence that Sarah had been involved in a string of burglaries in the area. The investigation uncovered a web of lies and deceit that Sarah had been hiding from me and the rest of the family. She had been living a double life, pretending to be unemployed while stealing from people's homes. The handbags, jewelry and electronics 
that the agents found in the rubble were just a small fraction of what she had stolen over the years. The scandal made the local news and my family was shocked and devastated. We had no idea that Sarah had been capable of such criminal behaviour. I will never forget the moment when my parents found out what Sarah had done. They were devastated and inconsolable. When I broke the news to them over the phone, my mother burst into tears and my father was speechless. They couldn't believe that their daughter, who they had always believed was a kind and caring person, could do something so terrible. They had always believed in giving Sarah second chances and supporting her tough times. But this was different. This was a betrayal of their trust and they felt like they had been living in a lie all along. They had been worried about Sarah's unemployment, but they never imagined that she would turn to criminal activity to make ends meet. When I visited them a few days later, they were still in shock. The house was silent, and my parents looked like they had aged years in just a few days. They didn't want to talk about Sarah, but I could tell that they were struggling to come to terms with what had happened. As the days went by, my parents started to open up about their feelings. They talked about how much they loved Sarah and how proud they had been of her when she graduated from college. They reminisced about all the good times they had shared as a family and wondered how things had gone so wrong. My mother blamed herself for not seeing the signs earlier, for not being there for Sarah when she needed her most. My father was angry at Sarah for throwing away everything they had given her and for tarnishing their family's reputation. I tried to comfort them as best I could, but it was clear that they were going to need more than just words to heal from this. My brother was the last one to find out. He was living abroad and was very busy. When I finally got through to him, he was stunned. My brother had always been very close to Sarah and he couldn't believe that she would do something like this. He asked me for all the details, but I didn't want to tell him over the phone. I told him that it was better if we discussed everything in person and that he should come back home as soon as possible. A few days later, my brother arrived and we sat down to talk. I filled him in on everything that had happened and he was devastated. He couldn't understand how Sarah had gotten involved in such a big scandal or why she would do something that would hurt our family so much. He was also angry that we hadn't told him earlier. He felt like he was the last one to find out and that we had been keeping things from him. I tried to explain that it was difficult to know how to break the news to him and that we wanted to wait until he was back home to tell him in person. As we talked, my brother's emotions started to bubble over. He was angry, sad and confused all at the same time. He started pacing around the room and talking about how he wished he had been there to help Sarah when she was struggling. I could tell that he was feeling guilty for not being there for her and I tried to reassure him that there was nothing he could have done to prevent this from happening. Sarah had made her own choices and we couldn't blame ourselves for her mistakes. In the end, my brother realized that he needed to be there for our parents and support them through this difficult time. He also made a promise to himself that he would try to be more present in Sarah's life and help her get back on track, no matter how long it took. But the scars of Sarah's betrayal would always be there. My parents would never forget what she had done, and neither would I. The experience had changed us all in ways that we could never have imagined. I struggled to come to terms with what had happened. Not only had I lost my house, but I had also lost my trust in my own sister. It was hard to reconcile the loving, caring sister I had known with the criminal that had been uncovered by the investigation. The whole ordeal left me feeling drained and emotionally exhausted. Update 1. A few months had passed since the investigation uncovered Sarah's involvement in the scandal and the legal process was well underway. It had been a difficult time for everyone in the family and we were all still trying to come to terms with what had happened. Sarah had been arrested and charged with multiple counts of fraud, embezzlement and arson. 
she had pleaded guilty to all charges and had been sentenced to several years in prison. It was a shocking and devastating blow to all of us, especially my parents. The court case had been a grueling experience for the entire family. We had to relive the trauma of the house burning down, the investigation and the fallout from Sarah's actions. We had to attend court hearings and face the reality of what had happened. Despite the pain and heartache that Sarah's actions had caused, my parents still loved her and wanted the best for her. They tried to visit her in prison as often as they could, sending letters and care packages to let her know that they still cared. I, on the other hand, didn't want to see her at all. It was all too much for me and I wasn't as forgiving as them. They focused all their attention on Sarah, while my house was the one that burnt down. I made my feelings very clear to all of them and reminded them that they shouldn't expect anything from me at all. It is ridiculous how the rest of the family still supported Sarah, even after her involvement in criminal activity. NTA, OP did the right thing by continuing the investigation. NTA, OP's family should have shown more concern for her. Her sister burnt down her house doing who knows what. And OP was the one who has to rebuild again. Those poor pets. Next story. I married into a wealthy family. My family is lower middle class, so it was quite a change. I have two kids, six female and four male, that get more or less anything they want, but they aren't spoiled. Anyways, we decided to spend Christmas with my family, and the day before Christmas Day, since my dad worked the actual day, my mom called all the kids to the tree for presents and did her usual you guys were so good, and that's why Santa gave you all these things, speech. After that, all of them quickly found theirs, but my two kids kept searching and couldn't find anything. My son was on the verge of tears, and my daughter was quiet after the tree was cleared, and they were left with nothing. I asked my mom what was going on, and my mom looked at me, then at my kids, and went, oops, I thought you knew. We all decided that we weren't buying them Christmas gifts. I asked her why, and she said that they get more than they need from me and my in-laws, and that they all collectively decided to spend more on those that need it. She looked at my son, who had tears running down his face, and said, See? Look at how spoiled he is. This is good for them. She then walked away. I quietly went back to the guest room and packed our things. I then called my husband, who had offered to go grab my mom something from Walmart, and told him to leave the stuff and come pick us up. We then left quietly after I let my dad know. He was disappointed, but said he understood. We managed to cheer the kids up and visited my in-laws instead. A while later, I got a call from my mother. She kept asking me why I disappeared like that and said that she was waiting for the stuff my husband was bringing from Walmart. I told her very politely that I didn't like what she did to my children and that she, or literally anyone else, could have at least told me. My mom said I was acting very entitled for someone who goes on multiple vacations a year. She then brought up my son crying again. I got pissed and told her that the reason he cried is because of her stupid speech about only good kids getting presents. My mom then randomly said that maybe he isn't a good kid if he cried like that over not getting toys. We argued back and forth over this, but then I ended up saying that she's very lucky I didn't snatch back the gifts I bought for my niece's nephew. My mom just said, the entitlement, before hanging up. My sister texted me the same thing and my other sister said that I'm playing the victim when the real victims are them and their kids. My mom sent a similar text as well. AITA? Edit. Got the day wrong. It was the day before, not actually Christmas Day. My bad. It's been a couple of days. My dad worked Christmas Day, so we opened presents the day before. Okay, just to clarify. 
The presents my dad and I got our kids were at our in-laws since we were going there after a while anyways. We told my in-laws what happened and they got some extra things to cheer them up. Getting their presents cheered my daughter up. It cheered my son up as well, but the speech my mom gave seems to be bothering him still. I've been using Santa wasn't done delivering presents, which again seems to have mostly worked since they did eventually get things, but I will be doing what a few people suggested about Santa apologizing and reassuring my kids that they were never on the naughty list. Thanks. Your mom made a big show to all the kids about Santa bringing presents because they were so good. All while knowing some kids didn't have anything under the tree because she intentionally left them out? And she thinks it's good for them? Look, it might be one thing to maybe spend money differently on grandkids who have a lot versus grandkids who need a lot. But your mom was actively out to punish your kids simply because they come from a wealthier background. That's just gross. NTA. NTA, this should be your hill to die on. This is probably the most heartless, pathetic thing I've ever heard. Your mom is way out of line. Your sisters sound green with envy and vengeful. I'd be cutting them out entirely unless they all sat down and apologized profusely and remorsefully. Truly vile behavior. I feel so sorry for your dad, as well as your husband and kids, obviously, who probably gets bullied around by these women and has had his Christmas ruined. Next story. I, 30 female, have a stepsister called Bella, also 30. Her dad and my mom got together when we were 16. Bella was very upset about her parents' divorce and was very hostile to my mother, so obviously she and I weren't going to be on the best of terms. And as we got older, we didn't bond. I always got along well with her two brothers, Jake and Max, and we're still close. Over the last year, Bella has been reading a lot about psychology and is always bringing up what she thinks everyone else's issues are. She will send articles about narcissistic parents, golden children, scapegoats, triangulation, etc. to our family group chat with messages like, at sibling, this is you, or isn't this like mom, their bio mom. Jake, Max, and my stepdad all say it annoys them that all she wants to talk about is the past. She's like this in person too. No matter how many times we smile and nod and sometimes even say we're not interested in armchair therapy from her, she just says she has a right to express her feelings and she's trying to start a dialogue. Part of her whole thing is deciding that her dad basically replaced her with me because she reminds him of her mother. And that because he loves my mom and never loved hers, I am his favorite golden child. This all came to a head over Christmas when Bella noticed the family photos my parents had on a shelf in their dining room. She asked where the picture of her and her dad at her graduation was, and he said they'd moved it to make room for a picture of me and him and my mom at my wedding, and her graduation photo was now in the lounge. Bella scoffed and sneered, of course. Over lunch, I was talking about a photo shoot I was working on, and Bella chimed in about how our parents will probably replace more photos of her with ones from my photo shoot. I told her this makes no sense because the photos aren't even going to be of me. And she just said it didn't matter. She was invisible when I was around and that I took her place in everyone's life. Her dad's, her brother's, even my husband. At this point, I just snapped and said that that was an absurd accusation when she makes every family conversation about herself. And while we all appreciate she is deeply hurt by a lot of things, we're all sick of being psychoanalyzed. I said that her obsession with me was ridiculous because the only person I've ever heard compare us is her and that she needs to find someone qualified and appropriate to discuss these hurt feelings with and Stop suffocating us all with her feelings because we're all bored. Jake just started laughing and Max shouted, Thank God someone said it. But Bella burst into tears and left the table. 
She went home early and has since removed herself from the group chat and isn't talking to her dad or brothers. While I stand by the points I made, I didn't mean to isolate her from her family, so I'm starting to wonder if I'm the a-hole. NTA, Bella needs to stop reading psychology journals and see an actual psychologist, counselor, or psychiatrist so she can work through all of these issues she has within herself and with the family. Maybe once she does, the, a family session can be had if y'all are willing to try and help her in that way. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.